Cyclone was made in 1988 by Williams. Cyclone runs on Williams' System 11 board set. Williams made these types of games from the mid-80s to the very early 90s. System 11 games have alphanumeric displays and are able to reproduce a large number of digital audio samples. Compared to System 9 games before, these new capabilities allowed the games to convey more complex objectives to the player via text and audio callouts. But still, compared to modern pinball machines, System 11 games like Cyclone have a pretty simple rule set. And Cyclone is one of the few System 11 games that doesn't have multiball, so you might expect that there's even less going on in this game. But there's more to Cyclone than I originally thought. We'll walk through the rules and scoring of this game in full detail later, but first, let's take a look at the game's rule card. It does a pretty good job of summarizing the rules, and it also calls out all of the major targets and mechanisms on the playfield. Each ball starts with a plunge into the skill shot, sometimes called the shuttle ramp. Regardless of how you do in the skill shot, the ball is launched into the lanes at the top of the playfield. Also at the top of the playfield is the spinning ferris wheel and its ramp. Under the ferris wheel, on the left side of the playfield, are the three ball toss stand-up targets. Completing the ball toss targets will light the comet ramp in the middle of the playfield. Similarly, completing the three shooting gallery targets on the right side of the playfield will light the cyclone ramp above them. There are two scoops on the playfield, the boomerang scoop on the left and the spook house scoop in the middle, protected by a single drop target. The basic gameplay and rules of Cyclone are the same regardless of how your machine is configured, but keep in mind that some of the details can be changed using the adjustment menus that are documented in the manual. In this video, I'm assuming the machine is configured with the default medium settings. For each feature I discuss, I'll call out all of the relevant adjustments so that you can review your machine's settings. The game begins with a skill shot on the shuttle train ramp. A soft plunge will land the ball in one of five holes. Plunge too hard and the ball will roll off the end of the ramp and bypass the skill shot altogether. Your goal is to land the ball in the hole in the middle, scoring 100,000 points. If you miss the 100k shot, the ball will land in one of the four other holes and score 10k, 25k, or 5k. The skill shot score is increased with a multiplier with each new ball, starting with a 1x multiplier and incrementing with each ball. So the skill shot in the first ball is worth up to 100k, while the second ball is worth up to 200k, and the third is worth up to 300k. If you earn any extra balls, the multiplier continues to increase up to 5x, giving the skill shot a maximum reward of 500,000 points. After the skill shot, the ball is automatically launched into the 1-2-3 lanes at the top of the playfield. You can also reach the lanes with a shot from the left flipper. The objective is to roll through each of the lanes so that all three of them are lit. You can press either flipper button to cycle which lanes are lit. Lighting all three lanes starts double scores, a 2x playfield multiplier. During double scores, you earn twice as many points for every shot, with exception of the jackpot that I'll talk about later. Double scores is a timed mode that lasts for 20 seconds, or until you lose the ball. If you complete the three lanes again during double scores, the timer is extended by another 20 seconds. When double scores is active, the displays count down the time remaining and the clown's eyes flash on the playfield. From the lanes, the ball normally falls into the pop bumpers, or jet bumpers as Williams called them. Each hit on a pop bumper scores a trivial amount of points. And while we're talking about trivial amounts of points, there are several targets and switches around the playfield that increase your score by just a little bit. I won't talk too much about trivial amounts of points. I'll focus more on how those targets set up the more lucrative shots and major objectives in the game. Aside from the trivial amount of points that you get from the pop bumpers, every hit on the pop bumpers increases the ferris wheel bonus. The ferris wheel bonus is collected by shooting the ferris wheel ramp when it is lit. You light the ferris wheel ramp by rolling through the right in lane. The ferris wheel bonus is a timed shot that is available for 15 seconds after being lit. If you roll through the right in lane again while the shot is lit, the timer resets back to 15 seconds. The amount of time left for the shot isn't displayed anywhere, but you can tell when the time is almost up. The ramp insert starts to flash faster when the time is running out. And then, when the shot is about to expire, the ferris wheel flashes flash, and a warning tone is played. The ferris wheel bonus starts at 50k and increases by 3k with every pop-upper hit. 
The fairy spell shot can be very lucrative, especially when double scores is active. The ferris wheel returns the ball to the left flipper. From there you can shoot the cyclone ramp on the right side of the playfield. You light the cyclone ramp by hitting and lighting each of the three shooting gallery duck targets below the ramp entrance. Once the cyclone ramp is lit, you have the opportunity to collect the gate bonus jackpot. To collect the jackpot, light the cyclone ramp and shoot it three times. When the ramp is lit, the first shot is worth 50k, the second shot is worth 100k, and the third shot collects the jackpot value. The three cyclone shots to collect the jackpot are timed. You can shoot the first shot any time after lighting the ramp, but you must hit the second shot within 15 seconds of hitting the first shot, and the third within 15 seconds of hitting the second. If the timer runs out on any of the shots, you have to relight the ramp and start over. The amount of time left for each shot isn't displayed anywhere, but you can tell when time is almost up because the ramp inserts start to flash faster when time is running out. And then, when a shot is about to expire, the cyclone flasher flashes and a warning cone is played. The current jackpot value is displayed approximately on the translate, and can be worth anywhere from 500k to 4 million. Jackpot value is increased by 5k with every pass through the 1, 2, 3 lanes at the top of the playfield. Unfortunately, the jackpot value is not affected by double scores, but the jackpot value does continue to accumulate until it is collected, and the value carries over from game to game, so it can be very lucrative. You can collect the jackpot any number of times during a single game. After you collect the jackpot, it resets back to 500k. If the jackpot is less than 1 million at the beginning of a game, another 1 million is automatically added, so each game starts with a minimum jackpot of at least 1.5 million. In addition to lighting the cyclone ramp, the shooting gallery duck targets have other rewards. The rewards for completing the duck targets are shown on the inserts below the targets. When you light all three duck targets, you collect the reward that is shown on the lit insert. The first time you light all three targets, you collect 25k, and you also light the bonus insert, which is the right half of hold bonus. More on that later. The second time you light all three targets during the same ball, you collect 50k. And the third time you light all three targets during the same ball, you light extra ball in one of the out lanes. More on extra balls later. There are another set of targets on the left side of the playfield, the ball toss cat targets. Just like the shooting gallery duck targets, you want to light all three of the cat targets by hitting each one of them. It's a glancing shot from the right flipper to hit the cat targets, so it is difficult to aim for a particular target and get all three of them lit. Happily, there's another way to light the targets. Hitting the target on the right side of the spook house will spot one of the unlit ball toss targets. Regardless of how you do it, completing all three ball toss targets scores 30k, lights the hold insert, which is the left half of hold bonus, and lights the comet ramp in the middle of the playfield. The comet ramp is maybe the most obvious ramp on the playfield. It's right in the middle of the playfield, accessible primarily from the right flipper, though you may be able to backhand it from the left side. You light the comet ramp by lighting all three ball toss cat targets to the left of the ramp. When the comet ramp is lit, the ramp scores progressively from 20k up to 1 million points. When lit, each shot on the comet ramp increases the ramp's value. The current value of the comet ramp is displayed as the flashing value on the back panel of the playfield. By default, the initial value of the comet ramp at the beginning of the game is 40k. The value increases each time you shoot the ramp. To collect the maximum value of 1 million points, you have to shoot the ramp 5 times. The shot only counts if you make it all the way around the ramp. You can shoot the first shot on the ramp any time after lighting it to collect its initial value, but each shot after that is timed. You have 20 seconds to hit each shot except for the last million point shot, which is only accessible for 10 seconds. The amount of time left for each shot isn't displayed anywhere. But you can tell when time is almost up, because the ramp insert starts to flash faster when time is running out. And then, when the shot is about to expire, the comet flashes flash and a warning tone is played. If you manage to shoot the ramp five times and collect the one million point score, the next time you light the ramp during the same game, the initial value of the ramp will start at 20k. And you'll have to hit the ramp six times instead of five to collect the one million point score again. Oh, and if you manage to shoot the 1 million point shot while double scores is active, in addition to getting 2 million points, the game also plays a special jingle that you won't hear any other time. 
The comet ramp returns the ball to the right flipper. From there, you can hit the centerpiece of the playfield, the spook house scoop. To enter the spook house, you first have to knock down the single drop target that guards it. Once you knock down the drop target, you have 15 seconds to shoot the scoop. The amount of time left for the shot isn't displayed anywhere, but you can tell when time is almost up because the scoop insert starts to flash faster, and then, when the shot is about to expire, the spook house flasher flashes and a warning tone is played. If you fail to shoot the scoop within 15 seconds, the drop target resets and you have to knock it down again. If you do manage to shoot the scoop while the drop target is down, you get a reward from the mystery wheel in the back box. The mystery wheel is the motorized spinning wheel in the back box. The wheel rewards you with a point value ranging from 2k points to zero, or zilch, points. Or will occasionally grant you an extra ball or a special. More on those later. When the wheel stops spinning, you collect the reward on the right side of the wheel where the clown is pointing. You can spin the mystery wheel any number of times during a single game, and it's a pretty easy shot to make. While the mystery wheel is spinning, any active timed shots are paused. In fact, timers are paused any time the ball is not under player control. So any active timed shots will pause when the ball is in a ramp or in a scoop. After the mystery wheel finishes spinning, the ball is ejected out of the boomerang, the scoop on the left side of the playfield. You can shoot the boomerang scoop from the tip of the right flipper. For me, it's kind of a tough shot to hit. If boomerang is not lit, it will just eject the ball right back at you, hence the name. You light the boomerang by rolling through either end lane. When lit, shooting the boomerang awards 50k and increases the bonus multiplier. The bonus multiplier increments each time you light and shoot the boomerang, up to 7x. Unlike a lot of machines, the bonus multiplier is maintained when you lose the ball. If you manage to max out the bonus multiplier, the game plays a special jingle that you won't hear any other time. The current bonus multiplier is shown by the lit inserts in the middle of the playfield. One of the inserts flashes until you collect it. On my machine, this is typically the 5x insert. If you increase the bonus multiplier enough to light that insert, you'll be awarded a special. There are two ways to collect specials in Cyclone. First, a special can be awarded from the mystery wheel. Second, a special can also be awarded by increasing the bonus multiplier to the number indicated by the flashing insert in the middle of the playfield. By default, a special awards a free game, but my machine is set to award an extra ball instead. There are three ways to collect extra balls in Cyclone. First, you can be awarded an extra ball from the mystery wheel. Second, if you light all of the shooting gallery duck targets three times, extra ball will light in one of the out lanes. And third, if your game ends quickly and you haven't collected any major awards, Extra Ball will light in one of the outlanes as a consolation. If Extra Ball is lit in the outlanes, you must lose your ball through the lit outlane to be awarded the Extra Ball. You can use the flippers to toggle which outlane is lit. When you lose your ball, you collect your End of Ball bonus, assuming you did not tilt. The End of Ball bonus is increased by pretty much every target you hit during gameplay. Unlike some games, the end of ball bonus is not displayed anywhere on the playfield. You can hold a flipper button to view the bonus value, called the outhole bonus. Your bonus is multiplied by the bonus multiplier, shown by the lit inserts in the middle of the playfield. You can activate hold bonus by lighting all of the ball toss cat targets to light hold, and all of the shooting gallery duck targets to light bonus. If both of the hold and bonus inserts are lit, you will collect your end of ball bonus normally and then also carry that bonus value into your next ball to get an even larger bonus at the end of the next ball. If you activate hold bonus during your last ball, you will collect your end of ball bonus twice at the end of that ball. It took me a while to warm up to Cyclone. For a while I thought about selling it. But then I put a bunch of work into fixing it up and swapping the playfield, and I guess I kind of developed an attachment with it. Cyclone has some really satisfying shots and great looking ramps, and all of the time shots keep up the pace and provide a good amount of challenge. Make sure to drop some quarters in Cyclone if you see one.